Pixelated Geeks coverage of E3 2015. Uh, we just finished the Ubisoft press conference, which... <sighs> so this is three years in a row, maybe four, where Ubisoft has managed to take a stable of absolutely phenomenal titles with excellent IPs and have the worst show ever. Um, there's something about Aisha Tyler that just I don't know what it is she's I don't know if I could say that she's worse than Mr. Caffeine but there's just there's a lot of try hard in Ubisoft show like there's the script tries too hard the presenters try too hard um, the people who are demoing the games try too hard and that was all we saw was just that beginning to end uh, with one notable exception which unfortunately was the very beginning of the show which was South Park's Fractured butthole. <laughs> We're all twelve. <laughs> like we all know, everybody's twelve. And, they're twelve. Right. And they dropped yeah. an Madden F bomb in the beginning. Of right, they did. They. This is the uh, the year of the F bomb, by the way. Apparently, that's just something that you can do um, at E three now. So, um, South Park's fractured <laughs> butthole is a direct sequel to last year's The Stick of Truth. Um. You presume, I think he plays the same character. You, yeah, you're that. the new kid. And uh, this year, instead of playing um, like a LARP, like a fantasy thing, uh, you're playing superheroes. And your character just so happens to have a super butthole. A butthole with superpowers. Well, if you played the first one, you knew that like your character's... Has a mystical... Ability. Yeah, I mean, that the butt was a big part of the first yeah. one, too. <laughs> Which you haven't played yet, right? No, I beat it. Okay. Oh, no, I beat that game twice. But to, like, I went back through as the Jew class, because there was no way that I was not going to play as a Jew. And I really hope the Jew class comes back in this one as well. Because the combination of mystical Jew powers and mystical butthole powers, is, that's a combination. But now we're superheroes, so... Right, yeah. Mis mystical butthole superpowers. <laughs> it's going to be great. Like, yeah. it's going to be... Obsidian has, like, seriously, Obsidian is on a roll. But it's not like, them, though. They said it was uh, They're not, South Montreal, this isn't, I think. Yeah, this they, isn't I think they said it was a different studio. Now I'm concerned, because seriously, I felt like my butthole was in good hands with Obsidian. Yeah? But, yeah. But now, but now you're now, worried about the safety of your butthole. Well, yeah. frankly speaking, I don't let just anyone handle my butthole. And More as a consequence, you. I think we need to be careful with our buttholes. I think that's a very important thing. So, yeah, regardless, the game looked great. Um... And the, that was the last thing that we saw that wasn't annoying about that press conference was Matt and Trey. Um, they were refreshing and honest. They were, as they always are. Right, and that's yeah. not something that's not something you know that that I'm surprised by. But it was like what it did, frankly, was put in in harsh relief everything for the rest of that show, because Ubisoft somehow has become this crazy, like, weird corporate monster full of posturing and posing. So the, the next big title they showed was For Honor, and the dude that came out who was presenting it was just, like, growling and had a cane and, like, a beard and was trying to be all badass and serious. And, like, the game looked awesome, but I was annoyed because of the persona that he put on. But so, regardless, we should talk about the game. Um, <coughs> 4v4, you describe it, because you came up with the perfect terminology for it. It's chivalry with a budget? Mm-hmm. Which we love chivalry. We do. We love chivalry. Um, <coughs> but that it, it looked like that in almost deadliest warrior because they're pitting different, you know, Areas warriors and regions. Samurai versus, Samurai versus Viking. Viking. And this weird like one on one. One it was like that in Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, because there's an element of like four players versus four players, and then there's AI for both teams, and it was clear that the AI was like really squishy. Yeah. Um, it looked beautiful. The duel looked. <coughs> I've got bacon jerky. That I, I see. I was what I was doing. I eat when I'm sad, and that press conference made me really <laughs> sad. Um, it was draining. It was, it was draining. like seriously. I yeah. like I was exhausted by the end of that. Um, and we still have another one. We do. We do. Nine. But thank God it's Sony. And it's, all, um, it's just going to be numbers. Well, but the thing with Sony is, like, at least they put on a good show. Yeah. Like, their yeah. press conference for the last two E3s has been, like, the highlight. So, anyway, For Honor, 4v4, 
looked it looked really good. It looked beautiful. Um, we saw both CG trailer and gameplay, and the gameplay looked good. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of nice control elements. It looked like the duels would be interesting. I think there's a lot to like there, um, as long as they keep that guy from ever talking again. Um, and so then they snapped to the division, and I'm actually gonna try and stay quiet on this one because um because I don't want to be a downer. Love you. They did a horrible job showing the division. There was a significant chunk of gameplay that they showed. But they did this weird interspersing of like establishing shots to try and create drama and like are you make sure you know this is the apocalypse <laughs> over and over again instead of just like just letting the gameplay go like they did with the, with the very first you know, teaser they showed for it. They did the first teaser, first teaser was like establishing here's gameplay. This was like we're gonna like shuffle the cards around and just like throw it at people and see how it turns out. Yeah. And not surprisingly, it didn't go very well. No. Um, no. It, well, it and- suffered a little bit from wa- a watchdogism <laughs> where what we saw originally was really really cool, and what we saw here wasn't that great. Um, it visually it, it looked uglier, mm-hmm. chunkier, muted. Yeah, um, I'm hoping, I'm still optimistic that, that they'll turn it around and that it'll come out better than, than it looked there. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's you know we go through this every E3. Like yeah. we we see new titles, we excited about them, and then over the course of the time that it takes them to come out, we lose interest. In we get considerably less excited because yeah. what when they show a proof of concept. It's usually flashier than it becomes over time. Yeah. And usually what happens is there's a nosedive and then there's a pullout at the end with, mm-hmm. with the bigger ones. And I think I really think the division has potential to be an amazing game. I just Fingers crossed. I mean part of part of what it is is that it was in a terrible press conference <laughs> and it was terribly yeah. presented. Yeah, it was. And like so those intercut shots that they showed, it wasn't it actually muddled the narrative more than it would have if you would just let it go because you were like, is this a different group of people? And everybody looks the same and the color palette isn't... It's like, by, there was an awesome thing at the end of that. Yeah. There was an... But by the time I got there, like, I was like, out already. Well, I just wasn't paying any attention. They, they were supposed to be showcasing this one part of the game, the Dark Zone, that you hadn't seen before. And then they completely derailed, here's this new part of the game, this new area... With the establishing shots, with mm-hmm. with the, I, I still can't tell in those in those demos if they are like if that's AI chattering with each other or if it's like supposed to be well, people. No, they do that like super scripted I have, stage. I don't know. I have a problem with that too because Destiny did it before and they did it with Division last year where it's just like they think this is how gamers talk and communicate to one another yeah, when they're playing together. Like, you know, we're not taking it super serious. We're playing a game. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's going to be more like I don't know. Well, let me change my. He's like, hold on, let me do this. It's not Yeah. Like, it's like, no, we're going to go left, and then you're going to take that tango there. And, you and know, when we it, communicate, like, there are times where we do legitimately communicate, but, like, it's not like, tango down, watch the left corner. Yeah. Like, there's not, we're like, ah, oh, there's a motherfucker over there on the left, and I'm fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. So. Shit, I got Cheetos in my keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not, like, we, it's Ah! It's just like, whole like, we know how gamers are, and it's like, no, like, no, that's you don't. not how no, people you don't. play. And, they even and had particularly that the... Ubisoft doesn't, if if the way that they structure their press conference is any indication. And their presenters for other games that we'll get to suffer from that as well. Yeah, I think what we saw with The Division, um, I think, is what we're going to see with another game we're going to talk about is one of the last things we saw. I think that I think the same thing is going to happen to that. We'll call it watchdog syndrome. Yeah, well, it's, it's 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 a watchdogism. I think that's going to happen to a lot of a lot of these games. And yeah, and unfortunately, Division was one of the three game. Yeah, three games, four, where we actually saw gameplay. Yeah, everything else was like pre-rendered, not in engine stuff, and that's very Ubisoft. It is. It it is very much in keeping with what they do. And it's funny because this year everybody seems to be getting like better about it. Like we've been seeing a much larger percentage of either in-engine or gameplay sequences. Yeah. And so when we got to this one, like, I think in addition to the bad presentation, there was also a thing where it was like, this is a CG trailer for a game that we've been knowing is coming for a long time. 
watching a CG trailer gives me nothing. No, yeah. it doesn't. It does unless I don't know anything about the game. Right. right. The only time you can do a CG trailer is when it's like the teaser or the reveal. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, look at For Honor, brand new game. Yep. And we got CG and, and we gameplay. Had gameplay. Yeah. Yep. And I'm. And then we had all looking, these other games but I think that I'm more... are not new, and we only got pre-rendered. Yeah. Well, and just to just to prove a point, out of the stuff we're looking at here, I'm more excited for For Honor than I am like more excited about it potentially. Than most of what else is up there, and I think it's partially because I didn't know about it, yeah. and they showed me gameplay, and it looked compelling. I think that Forerunner will deliver exactly what we saw. Yeah, and the, see, that's important. It's important to do that. Don't overpromise and underdeliver. Yeah. And like, I seriously, I do have faith that the division will be solid. But what that showed me was there's there's a weakness in it on some level, and they have to hide it. And and I. I don't know about that. Now, it did present something we do really need to talk about this, which is the this, the way that multiplayer grouping works. Yeah. There's an element of backstabbing <laughs> in it that's interesting. So, like, the the sequence had three players, and there was one sequence where they were going to go up against another player group, but then there was an enemy group, so they decided to fight the enemy group, and then... Well, decided uh, by, like, they were pointing guns at each other, and then the new group of two just, like, went right past and engaged the others. Right. Which I... Don't think we're players. I, well, I'm not well, sure because be it was such a badly presented thing. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what we saw. But yeah. regardless, so the two that they are all pointing guns at it. They go past. They engage to the group, and then the three players that you're kind of seeing from the perspective of join in on the attack. Mm -hmm. And so like they are like allies with each other when with no communication that we saw. Yeah. Right. So that would actually be an interesting thing, not to have people talk like to not even allow them to talk like to each other. Yeah. Chat. Yeah. And so, like, as that progressed, you saw that get resolved, and then at the end of the sequence, you had two of the three players in the group injured. And, mm -hmm. and one of them said, you know, can you help me up? And then the third player, like, shot and killed one, and then walked over, shot and killed the other, and then yeah, took all their the shit. Group. And he left. left the group, and then yeah. proceeded to, to finish them all. Yeah. So there's some, there's gonna be some griefery there. There's gonna be some trolling. Going you're not on. going to stop pointing your gun at people until you're like safe in a loading screen. Yeah. Or like. And it's funny because even of the, the three of us, like I trust you guys when I'm playing groups with you. But what's what's gonna happen is we're gonna be <laughs> like, knows. we're gonna ki we're gonna be killing like all these people around us, and then we'll call in the chopper, and they'll all be dead. And we'll all just be like, no, <laughs> no, what's gonna happen? Well, is, don't you do it. If you leave the group, I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot you in the head. What happens is. Taylor's gonna get real quiet, <laughs> and we're gonna hear a chuckle, and it's gonna be, "Damn it, Taylor!" And that's when we're gonna then, boom. But see, that's the thing. Like, that's why. That's why I don't worry about him because I know to watch him. It's you that I'm worried about because you're the one that we trust most, and we're gonna be we're gonna be sitting here like, "Fuck!" <laughs> like, I know you, and then pop, pop, and we're gonna be like, "Mother." You I, just hope you, I just hope you can betray people without leaving the group because if, unless leaving the group is like, I hit one button. If I have to go into a menu to do that, no. I'm taking my hands off controls that I need my hands on. Yeah. Uh, so either I need to be like to be able to betray you guys without leaving the group, or it's like Xbox, leave group. <laughs> yeah. And then I can proceed to you... just try and blow everyone up. <laughs> so regardless, there's some really compelling stuff in that gameplay, and that's that's too bad because yeah. Yeah. that game looked like shit. I know it's just a terrible presentation. Um, um, okay, so there was Drive Club, which um, I guess Ubisoft wanted to remind us still exists, which is probably a bad idea because it was very poorly received and nothing about that trailer did anything to reignite any interest whatsoever and aren't I supposed to be getting a free version of that game somehow through some service? Are you? PlayStation 4? Huh? I think we were supposed to get a free version of that game, just never never materialized mm. whatever, I don't give a shit anyway, I wouldn't play it um, Another so driving game? Yeah, Dragmania. Which looks great yeah. yeah, like all those games do um, all those games are really compelling. They're very fun. Uh, you can create whatever you want. Cool feature on this one was that uh, it will just build a track for you yeah. randomly throw them together. Um, and it becomes a, well, it's not fair, but have fun. Well, and I, I liked it. It felt like one of the more honest ones that was here, or that was in, yeah. the, in the presentation, because like they, they, had the, the, they had the game build this track, and as the, as the presenter was, was starting it off, um, he clipped the top of a sign and just like rolled over and had to restart yeah, the track. Yeah, like a like, second after it started. Yeah. So you could tell that it was it was something he hadn't done before. You could tell that the game was running right, like in real time. Yeah. It looked compelling. Um, and that's really more of what Ubisoft needed to do. Now, those were total douchebag hipsters who were presenting the game. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but at the same time, it was genuine, and it was a hell of a lot less annoying than Aisha Tyler. Um, and so then we, we skipped into um, Just Dance, which... I called it. Called it. You did. You called that. Uh, yeah, and we're going to get a new one, and I know that that's really exciting for the people out there that play those games. No fitness game, though. No fitness game. No fitness yeah. game. Yeah. And, um, and then also, for some reason, they felt like it was necessary to do that thing that they always do with Just Dance, which is bring in the celebrity of the week and have them do a little awkward dance number. Yeah. And we didn't know who it was, because normally Jason Derulo announces himself at the beginning of the song by doing something like, Jason Derulo, or I whatever, and then the song yeah, starts. Yeah, we don't know who that is. We're yeah. taking his word for that. They, well, he always does that. That's okay, just okay. his thing. Right, like, And on. it's fun, because, you know, you're... I don't listen to the radio, but like there was a time when I was in a car where the radio was on, and I was like, who is this? And he was like, Jason Derulo. And I was like, oh, it's Jason Derulo. Oh, okay. And so we didn't say anything before today. I was like, who are you? I don't know who you are. This is weird for me. What's happening? But it was stupid, and he sounded terrible. Yeah. And I get that those games are a big deal. And apparently, they're bringing it up to all consoles, whether you have a camera or not. You can oh, yeah. use you your can smartphone. Use your, cell, your cell phone camera as, as the camera. And then they said they're going to bring it That's to consoles control. like... Oh, was, oh yeah. Yeah, well, then they said they're going to bring it to console, like all console layouts. And a streaming service for additional music. Right. Well, uh, only on the Wii U, PS4, gen. and Xbox One. Yeah, so I I mean, yeah, I know that that's really exciting, but and, and that's a lot of their business, and that's great. Um, but that was still a very painful segment to yeah. sit through. Um, so, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Yeah. yeah. So, big old CG trailer. Which yep. um which was I mean it was pretty the way that Assassin's Creed CG trailers all good great music, music are yeah, yeah. yeah. Music. and you know that's one of those games that I I think most people as long as you don't hate the franchise that was one of those games that was kind of a sight unseen thing it's another Assassin's Creed it's one of the big ones and it's in Victorian London that's cool but no that's game a cool idea yeah. well and th- <laughs> this was my favorite thing uh, was that they were like and we have a gameplay sequence for you here at E3 at the booth. And if you're not here at E3, you can play it at this Ubisoft Location. cafe thing that we have one in the U.S. In and then LA. scattered across the world. And then, like, a lot of cities across Europe and in Australia. Yeah. And so, yeah, so America, but then again, that's kind of fair. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is. We get everything yeah, anyway. Um, but so, I mean, it was a game. It looked good. The thing that blows my mind is that we have a gameplay trailer, and you can see it at our booth but they didn't show it at sure, the, yeah. you know what 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 does that say that yeah. says either you are a little embarrassed of it because it's not super popular i mean super like ready to go or you just don't want to sell your game well i don't i don't know what that that's dumb that's a dumb choice um and then rainbow six siege, siege you know with uh, tarot hunt with tarot hunt tarot hunt not terror hunt not terrorist hunt tarot hunt don't We're hunting say the name too quickly. You might say something horrible. Yeah, it. I mean, there's going to be a beta. Public yeah, beta. yeah. We right. it for down yeah. the road in September. And, and we saw gameplay of that. There was. Yeah, with and awkward communication. Yeah, yeah, more of that. Uh, overly, overly tactical, technical communication. But, yeah, you know, it. It looks fun. It looks, you know, yeah, like a great co-op experience. You can still blow holes in walls and yes. shoot through them, yep. which is awesome, or yeah. floors or ceilings. Mm-hmm. That did not. That did not suffer from watchdogism. No. no, it didn't. And frankly, like, it didn't look amazing, but it was one of those things where, like, because of the level of environmental destruction, it doesn't really have to. No. And that's going to be one of those games where, with a lot of games, you notice how pretty something is for the first, like, 30 minutes, and then you never notice it again. Yeah. Um, and with a game like that, it doesn't have to be stunning. It has to be workmanlike. Mm-hmm. And then the environmental destruction has to be really good. And it is. Yeah. I don't think there's any question that that game's going to be, like, really fun and really good. I think I do have a question about whether or not that game is going to suffer from launching in a window that's kind of complicated. Yeah. So was that one of the ones that we're we're getting that spring of next year, or are we getting that? The beta was in September, right? Yeah. I'm not crazy. I originally thought it has an October release. I'm not entirely so. certain. They're throwing a lot of numbers at us, but whether it launches this fall or spring of next year, it doesn't matter when it launches. There's like a six month span of time where just. There's a lot of competition, yeah. but Rainbow Six, you know, it's it's different from other shooters. And there was, uh, I forgot about this, about the division. There is, uh, there was announced the beta for mm-hmm. 2016, and, the and then way... like a release date was like late 2016 or something. 
So it still has time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and th there is time. And the way that they talked about the beta for the division, it sounded like it was just going to be open. Yeah. Like they didn't they didn't say anything about signups, um, anything about exclusivity. So, so I mean that's that's good news. And then last part of the presentation, which was <laughs> really surprising. Yeah, out of nowhere. Um, I mean, at first, like we were <laughs> we were throwing shit around for the first like thirty seconds of the trailer. Gone. Is it just Causeway? That's the wrong publisher. <laughs> yeah. Is this uh? Is this the cartel? Call, call, the call, call of War. Call of Wars? Like, yeah. What is? What is going on here? And um, it looked a little too tactical. It did. It looked a little bit tactical. But really fast paced, considering and what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what it is is Ghost Recon Wildlands, which is a open world, cooperational shooter with skydiving. So it's and like if you choose to go that way. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that was like really interesting about it is, first of all, you have you have vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. You have, like, it showed them controlling a helicopter, an ATV, and motorbikes. Yep. There was a heavy implication of co-op. Um, and you you have an open world, and you, you get to choose how you tackle each objective. And the, the way that the trailer worked out, they did this little beating you over the head symbolism with blood going three different directions. Um, but essentially, you have, like, you have, like, a all-out, just raid route you have like a stealth tactical route and then you have something it was like an ambush route and I didn't really yes, understand ambush, the difference yeah. between those two I guess they I don't know regardless you have different ways that you can tackle each objective um, and it takes place where? in like all over though they yeah. said it originally in like yeah, South America and then it was America then it like North America and Europe. Then like Europe and Asia and it was there was a pretty heavy implication it was like a war on drugs kind of thing yeah well, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah I mean it looked it looked good, but that was Our the title that yeah that he yeah. so the trailer looked really pretty and there was a pretty heavy implication that we were looking at gameplay yeah there was some like you saw some gameplay mm -hmm. aiming on sights and... and so it it was one of those things where after an entire draining press conference because Ubisoft is exhausting. Um, and after the division, it was you're watching it and you're like, this looks really good. I wonder what it's actually going to look like in six months. I'm you're, waiting for you to disappoint me. You're going to see the Ghost Recon team raiding Uncle Bob's meth lab, and it's going to be a bit. Yeah, yeah, just I don't I don't know. Um, still, that it's exciting to see Ghost Recon come back. You know, that's obviously a big franchise for them. So, so this was my takeaway from from Ubisoft, um, which is. You know, Ubisoft is a company that owns the Tom Clancy franchises, and that's a big deal. You know, those are those are those games have a pedigree; they sell like crazy. Why is it? And like, I'm not just thinking. Okay, so For Honor was also awesome. South Park was also awesome. I I don't really like Just Dance, but it's a huge, huge franchise. It's undeniable. Assassin's Creed is a really big deal. We had all these awesome games in one way shape or form in the shittiest press conference you would think they would learn yeah like there's no i'm not worried about ubisoft i'm not worried about the games that they're making i'm not worried about the pro the product their press conferences are awful it's, just like a, it's a great store in a bad location yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and and it's one of those i'm even like I'd be okay next year if Ubisoft said they're not going to have their own press conference and just go to other people's. Yeah. You know, because that might be better for them. Yes, because I always... I have, like, a soft spot in my heart for Ubisoft because of the a lot of the games that I've played from them over the age are, like, really good. Most Mostly just the Tom Clancy games. But it's one of those things where, like, I think of them fondly... Except for like the month and a half after E3. Yeah. Like I I I, lo I love them as a publisher unless we're talking you play. So I don't you know I never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that because I just talked myself out of Ubisoft. Uh. Um, but seriously, like amazing games. Terrible press conference. Please cut Aisha Tyler. Please or just get 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 her a better writer. Like it's one or the other. God, I hope she doesn't write her own stuff. Um. <laughs> Because she's an incredibly awkward host. She's incredibly awkward on stage. 
they were badly set up. They just they make such bad choices for a company that owns such good games and honestly makes such good games. Well, it's also like the Ubisoft effect with their games being great and the presentation not being great. It's kind of like with her. She is good outside of this Ubisoft bubble. Yeah. In certain instances, and it's like she's, she's hilarious not being utilized. On Archer. She's not being utilized. You know. Yeah. And it's so it's this weird like they need to fix it. Yeah. You know? and, uh, a comedian is only as good as the material. Yeah. Like and. You know, I'm sure that you could take the best comedian in the world and give him a shitty script and it just wouldn't work out. And everything about the script of the Ubisoft press conferences needs to be scrapped. Give it a month, so. month and a half, we'll forget about it. We will. We'll be like, oh, Ghost Recon. We'll right. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's and, and that's the thing. Like, almost every single game that we saw, the game, either the what we saw of the game was compelling or the game concept is compelling to someone. Yeah. My advice is... Go watch the trailers. Not the conference. Don't watch the conference. Mm-hmm. You will enjoy it so much more. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, anyway, um, thanks very much. We're going to be back at 9 p.m. Eastern for Sony. So, ready your body for some pie charts. We'll see you there.